time now is 37 minutes past the hour, 11 o'clock, and uh, you're listening to your point of view show this morning with Andy, and you're listening to Community Radio. Here on FM 95.3 in Kingston, FM 98.5, and we stream on the internet at hewnfm.com. In the studio is Gideon Gordaver. He's the Tasmanian Greens candidate for the Legislative Council coming up. Good morning, Gideon. Good morning, Andy. Thanks for having me. No, thank you. And uh, how was the run? You would have had a nice drive down the water, the serenity. Was good. It's beautiful. So yeah. I live in Allen's Rivulet and I've been there for about 24 years and it's just fantastic on a beautiful morning like yeah. today. Um, it's good to see that that smoke is clearing up now and the blue sky is out. And mm. look, we're in such a beautiful part of the world. And one of the amazing things about running as a candidate is you get to meet so many people and have really important conversations about what matters to people. And uh, look, one of the resounding things is that we are truly blessed to live in an area like this and live in a democracy like this, where we all get to have our say, we all get to participate. Um, so it's been really uplifting. And can I just say at the beginning, Andy, that yeah. community radio really is the lifeblood of a community. I spent a year on Radio Skid Row up in Sydney at 88.9 FM up there, and it's the oldest running community radio station, and I realise that uh, our station here at Hue and FM is the southernmost station, so there's a bit of synergy there. I just... As I used to be vice president of Tassie Broadcasters as well, the operation that runs each radio, this is going back a ways now. And I recognise that community radio brings people together in a way that is so important right now. We're in a time where we need to be more resilient, more adaptable, and we need to bring community together. And that's why having community radio stations like this is fantastic, and we need more of it. So what I think is that we actually need to adequately resource community radio, and that will help our communities come together. Yes, William, well said. Thank you. That's, that's good news to, to know your involvement in community radio and your, your appreciation and passion. And, uh, in, uh, and it's about keeping an open mind and working together in unity, isn't it? And uh, supporting one another and coming up with solutions. And uh, as I say, your story, Gideon, overall more, your involvement, what, what um, got you involved in politics to get involved? Yeah, so originally I worked for Dying with Dignity, uh, which is an organisation that campaigns for voluntary assisted dying legislation. So basically my story is that um, my dad was ill with motor neuron disease, which is a terminal illness, and there was nothing he could do about that, but he wanted to end life on his own terms. And unfortunately, the law at the time in Tasmania made that illegal, that he wasn't allowed to choose the, the, the way that he was able to end his own life. So he had to break the law in order to get the death that he wanted. And if that doesn't make you political, I don't know what will. You know, it really fired me up about human rights. It fired me up about social justice. And it fired me up about the idea that individuals deserve autonomy. Um, as John Stuart Mill said, over his mind and body, the individual is sovereign. You know, we have um, the capacity to make sovereign, autonomous decisions for ourselves. And I really believe that we all, as individuals participating in this democracy, we have the capability to make decisions for ourselves and... So I really got fired up about that particular issue. Since then, I worked for the Heart Foundation. I worked for Anglicare Social Action Research Centre. I was actually working underneath Meg Webb, who's currently the, um, the member for Nelson, the independent member for Nelson. Uh, I was on the board of the Glenorchy Community Fund at the time when Adriana Taylor, who used to be the commissioner for Hugh and Valley Council, was, uh, was uh, uh, at the helm of that organisation. Um, I've done a range of things. Uh, I used to be an a artist coordinator for a music festival in Canada. Um, I used to work in children's theatre, uh, theatre for young people travelling around the country and did a, a tour of the United States as well. So I've had this really kind of broad range of experience, but my key passion is making sure, because I spent a long time unemployed actually when I was young, I grew up in Allen's Rivulet and there's not a whole lot of jobs out there. And I was constantly running into this catch-22 where people would say, you need to have two years work experience before you need apply. And I'm thinking, well, how am I supposed to get two years of work experience if nobody's willing to give me that work experience? So I became really passionate about the Job Guarantee Program. This is the idea that anybody who wants to work should be able to work, that there shouldn't be involuntary unemployment. You know, it's one thing when people choose not to work, but if somebody wants a job, there should be jobs available. And there's plenty of things to get done. If you just look around your community where I live in Allen's Rivulet or, or here, um, there's so much good work that needs to be done and we just need to find a way to harness a way of all that talent and potential that's in our communities to make sure that work does get done. So I think there's tremendous opportunities actually out there, um, but it's about making sure that we end involuntary unemployment. And it is. It's about knocking on the doors and getting out there where it's community, putting your foot in the door, can open up opportunities in areas, just putting, put it going forward, moving forward. It's so important. Absolutely. So yeah. I've been on the Kingborough Council now as a councillor for the last three years. 
And we know that in just the Kingborough municipality alone, there's over 500 young people not in education, employment or training. So there's an immediate opportunity that I see for those 500 young people to be brought into the fold, to be given work experience. And so just like me, where I was trying to find work experience and, and couldn't find it, can you imagine a situation if there was a job guarantee for young people, which is part of the Greens policy platform, that allowed young people to work up to 16 hours a week doing things for the public purpose? So I already know at my counselling, in Kingborough Council area, there's heaps of things to do. Um, whether it's environmental remediation projects, whether it's, whether it's helping out in the caring economy, whether it's helping at sports uh, events and things like that, or helping volunteer at organisations, current work that uh, that is uh, lacking because there aren't enough volunteers to do it. We should be employing young people to do those jobs. There's a tremendous opportunity. Oh, there is, Gideon. And, and, and as well, what feedback are you getting from the community overall with their main concerns? Well, I've been doing a lot of door knocking, and whether you're in whether you're in Ranala, whether you're in Hewanville, whether you're here in Jeeveston or or in Blackman's Bay, time and time again, people are concerned about climate, health, and housing. We have a lot of issues with public transport, with improving the transport network, but time and time again, the common refrain is health, housing, and climate action. So, um, look, the the most important thing I think is. We're now living in a world with more frequent and severe weather events. We need to be adaptable and we need to make sure that we're properly resourcing our communities to get us ready for these kind of calamities. So I'm very proud to say that as a Kingborough councillor, it was my amendment to the net zero emissions motion that brought our net zero com uh, commitment down to 2035. Kingborough Council will be a net zero emissions council by 2035. And that's something that I've been able to achieve as a Kingborough councillor. And if I am uh, elected to the Legislative Council, there are so many opportunities to really, I think, continue Dr Bastian Seidel's legacy of putting a spotlight on health uh, for this region. We need more paramedics, we need more ambulances, we need more emergency vehicles, but critically we need an urgent care centre for the state south and we need an ambulance station for the channel. You know, I've been hearing a couple of the candidates talk today and, um, I, you know, I, I reflect on what Toby just said about um, how, you know, they're kind of your fair weather friends that they fall in during an election and offer you a couple more paramedics for the ambulance station, but where were they the rest of the time? Well, I'd have to say that both major parties, year in and year out, have failed us on health. And, you know, Bastian Seidel did such a great job putting a spotlight on health. And what happened to it? You know, he got turfed out, essentially, because he was willing to stand up to these major parties and, and all the factions going on within those. So, Look, we have a, a, essentially a toxic Labor Party that lacks, lacks a vision and we've had a Liberal government that for a long time now has really, I believe, failed the community. Um, so that's why the Greens have a plan to invest for 224 full-time uh, equivalent roles in Ambulance Tasmania. We need that urgent care centre for the State South and we need that ambulance station for the Channel. We need 27 new ambulances. We need seven new light fleet vehicles. It's not enough to just put in, you know, four extra paramedics. Like, I talk to Ambulance Tasmania, I talk to the paramedics, and people are doing such an amazing job. We really need to pay homage to the hard work that's done by the health workers in Tasmania. They, they do miracles under enormous pressure and uh, under under-resourcing, critical under-resourcing. But I personally don't think that anything's going to change if we keep voting in the major parties, we're going to get the same result. Like, what's that definition of insanity, of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting something else to happen? You know, for 40 years now, we've been switching sides, you know, Labor, then Liberal, then Labor, then Liberal. But the thing to remember is that both these major parties are taking corporate donations. That's the big deal here, right, is that both major parties, they always seem to have enough money to give a tax cut to the federal group, to give a tax cut to pokey barons who are making money off gambling, but they never seem to have enough money to adequately invest in healthcare, in housing, or in climate action. So if we keep doing the same thing, we're going to get the same results. And that's why I strongly encourage people to vote number one Greens, of course. But also, let's let's hear more from these minor parties and the independents. There is a great power swelling within the community and it's it's actually repudiating the failures of the major parties and I think it's moving in a different direction and I welcome that. I think the sooner that we um, say goodbye to those major parties and, and welcome in a new era of climate action, of good healthcare outcomes, of good public and affordable housing that's energy efficient, I mean, we're going to be welcoming in a jobs boom that will be fantastic for our communities, but I really do think we actually need to abandon the major parties and just move towards the Greens. So, Gideon, you feel out there that people are sort of doing the independent as well, there'll be more independents elected, whether it's in the legislative or the uh, federal side of it. 
and when we go into climate to uh, the environment too, we live in a special place. It's not a big island. Absolutely. I'm not saying a smaller population. You, know, you can look at I thought Kingborough Council, uh, Kayleen Allen, who I have dealt with two years ago or whatever. I remember her name clearly, and I was corresponding by email uh, with her about the program for feral cats That's right. that was introduced to Bruny Island. And I did bring that with up with Adriana, Commissioner Taylor, but Adriana said it's too big an area, so she didn't want to, which I do remember her saying that, which was disappointing, because it can all start from here, your council, your area, doesn't matter how big you are, and that's the great work that Kayleen has done for Bruny Island, and it has to happen. You know, these feral cats are killing machines. It's sad that they get dumped uh, by people, and I think we're beyond education. We need to bring in the new compulsory uh, registration, the sexing, just like the dogs, the same thing. So I'm hoping it happens in each council, one council at a time, to do that. I'm so glad you mentioned that. And the, the work that Kingbird Council has done has really led the way in cat management with, with feral cats and stray cats, and Kayleen does a terrific job. And you're absolutely right that when there is a good example, like what Kingbird has done with cat management, when there's a good example, it provides the opportunity for others to fall in and to create these enormous changes, positive changes for our environment. Um, you're absolutely right that the environment is what we all depend on. And that's why I think we need to kind of redirect the way that we look at the economy to start caring more about people and planet and maybe care a little bit less about private profit. Like at the moment, we've got, if you look at what's going on at the moment with, with anthropogenic climate change, we actually need to make sure that we reframe the way that we measure value. At the moment, we measure value as how much profit can a, a private company make? And we see all these big multinational corporations, they're the ones donating to our major parties. And we see that their whole bottom line is all about profit. But if you actually look at the triple bottom line, you know, people and planet and then profit, it kind of reframes the whole way that you look at every issue. Um, I, I strongly recommend a book called Donut Economics, which basically recognises that, you know, you've got the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals, like the basically the minimum standards of material standards of living that we all need. You know, we all need uh, good food, we all need good water, we all need clean air. Uh, there's these planetary limits that we have. And then there's also, you know, the material limits that we need. You know, we all need good, good housing and we all need good health care. And we need to operate in such a way that we don't go beyond our planetary boundaries. But, but we also give a, a, a guaranteed standard of living to people. So my main aim in running for Hewan in the Legislative Council as the Greens candidate is to improve the material standard of living of people's lives, to make sure that we have good, secure, well-paying jobs that are jobs that don't harm the planet, that actually make the community thrive. And we can do it. There's examples all over the world in every jurisdiction. There are interesting things going on at a community level. I'm really passionate about localising localizing our food systems. Like, if there's one thing I've noticed during this last pandemic, we're constantly hearing about supply chain issues, right? Well, you, you go to a supermarket, sometimes you can't find toilet paper, other times you can't find sauerkraut. Don't tell me that we can't produce our own toilet paper and sauerkraut. Like, why are we having to depend on, um, you know, if there's a lockdown in China, suddenly we can't get the right kinds of materials that we want here? But that's because we haven't invested in local jobs we haven't invested in caring for our own local area and we haven't localised our food systems and our supply chains. There's enormous opportunities with advanced manu manufacturing, um, material reuse and, and waste recovery. There's jobs of the future that are just waiting to come in. But what you need is vision and you really need a party that's willing to look ahead to the future rather than just looking behind. This is a whole lot, as you say, the health, the climate, the transport, it's a... You know, public transport, perhaps more pub public transport put out there to encourage people to not drive their cars and get on a on the public transport system from whether it's ferries, buses. Even years ago, old footage I looked at, the trams, you know, and it took the lines. Isn't it just a, a tragedy? Yeah. You know, I've been watching all this old footage yeah. um, of, of Hobart. There used yeah. to be trams everywhere. There used right. to be a better public transport system then than we have now. And we could get that back. The Greens have a policy for free public transport statewide. That's something that we can achieve, and it would cost about $33 million, right? Well, that's the same amount of money that we're spending on the fifth lane of the southern outlet, right? So it's all about political choices, you know? We do have choices to make a really robust, localised economy that will have good jobs for local people in local areas that will build the community, and we can do that in such a way that we aren't trashing the planet at the same time. But we need to be willing to hear those ideas, and I think the main obstacle in our way is essentially big multinational corporations who are using their money to purchase political influence 
through a series of dark donations to the major parties. At election after election, the big parties, both Labor and Liberal, are taking, for example, this year, they're taking over a million dollars from fossil fuel companies each. Well, this is why we're getting the kind of stuck-in-the-mud outcomes that we've had for the last however many years. I mean, if you just look at the cost of living, that's a perfect example. There's a meme going around at the moment of, in the, the TV show The Simpsons, you know The Simpsons House? It's kind of a two-storey house. It's got two sitting rooms, a living room. It's got the kids upstairs. It's got a garden with a, a cubby house in the back, a tree house in the back. And that used to be the normal thing for a single-income household. Well, find me a single-income household nowadays that can afford the good life, that can afford a good house with a, you know, a double-car garage and a two-storey. You can't do it on a single income anymore. And the reason for that is that the working class and the middle class have been absolutely decimated, myself included. I, I live with my mum, can't afford a house. I heard Toby say the same thing. Well, I'm sorry you know, to say it, um, Toby's joined a party that has been largely, along with the Liberal Party, largely responsible for seeing us usher in this new era where we can't get ahead, like the Australian dream. I mean, you'd have to be asleep to believe it nowadays because we don't have the opportunities that we used to have. And that's because the major parties are taking dark donations from big corporations. And, and the Greens want to stop that. My main goal, if I get into the upper house of the Tasmanian State Parliament, my main goal is to, is to ban corporate donations to political parties, to ban that. We shouldn't have corporate, big corporations donating to political parties. And it's also to stop this draconian anti-protest legislation. I think every individual should have the right to peacefully make their point of view. And right now, whether you're on a blockade into Kaina Tarkine, or whether you're campaigning outside Parliament House about, you know, any number of the issues that we've been hearing people protest about recently, you know, in terms of government cracking down on people. In a democracy, you should have the right to say how you feel and to participate in your democracy in a peaceful way, and that includes protest and the right to protest. So I'll be out there defending people's rights to peacefully protest, and that's that's a big part of why I'm running. The big one, peaceful, peaceful protest. Absolutely. And uh, as you say, well, it sounds like the health and climate and transport and other issues is the affordability and the costs to be looked at To because uh, it's hard for people to put bread and butter on the table, two families or singles to work together, have to have two jobs, three jobs, four jobs to get ahead and make ends meet. So uh, a lot of people are out there in Struggle Street uh, Gideon, it's just uh, not good times when it shouldn't be in this day and age. And we can change it, but we need to localise our systems. We need to decentralise. We need to get, you know, localised food systems. We need to have localised manufacturing, localised putting solar panels on rooftops and, and, and getting EV charging infrastructure all through our towns. There's so many good jobs, good local jobs for local people to be had in, the, in transitioning to 100% renewables. We can do it, and there'll be a bonanza of good, well-paying jobs. But whilst we've got the two major parties dragging their dragging their heels. And the reason why they're dragging their heels is they're taking corporate donations. So if we can just get rid of those corporate donations and get rid of those major parties, uh, that's why it's so important this election to vote one Greens. And also, you know, try and favour the, try and favour, after you vote one Greens, of course, try and favour the independents and, and the minor parties. Don't give your vote, I, I urge you, don't give your vote to the major parties. You'll get the same result that we've had for the last couple of decades. Your schedule in today. Today is nice and busy. I'm going to go do some letterboxing right now in Jeeveston and um, say good day to some people. Uh, I'm going to pop by the visitor centre, I think, and say good day there. You know, I was just in, in, the, in the town centre just a minute ago before I came in, and it's really thriving at the moment. There's a really great energy, and there's a lot of people out and about. So, look, it's a perfect time to get out on the hustings and, and talk to people about the issues that matter to them. So I'll be having a great day, and I, I look forward to having a chat. Good on you, Gideon. Well, thank you for your time this morning, being part of the, uh, the show and to be uh, in community radio. And it's enlightening to know your background on community radio. Thank, Thank you so much, time. Andy. Good Thank time. you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Bye. And that's all for the uh, show this week. Uh, take care. Look after one another. And uh, bye for now. Authorised by DRES Tasmanian Greens Hobart.